We did it! We defeated the Demon King! Did you destroy his heart? Uh, uh, who are you? Oh, you can call me Melly. Did you destroy his heart? What heart? You've defeated Supreme Demons before. Now tell me, did you get his heart? Thank you to our $5 patrons, Sin is Lancelot and the Divine Anpu. And a big thank you to our $25 patron, the Mr. Greed. Now, before we hop into this breakdown slash review of chapter 328 of Black Clover, please don't forget to leave your own on the chapter in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure that little notification bell so you can miss out on any videos that come with the channel. Also, also, I do have a patron down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Now, let's get into last week's poll what well, not last week honestly not think about it two weeks ago's poll so i ended up asking y'all <laughs> what did y'all think was gonna happen next because <laughs> we saw we saw last chapter honestly he was putting luchi in a pack he was putting him up in the air so obviously the question was what's next up what's what's going on after that i wanted y'all to pick one of the choices i offered you and let me know why down below and with a staggering 54 percent we got that five seconds is not enough. Lucci lives and runs. And here's the thing. I like this shot. Let's just go over the other options, all right? So the second runner up was a 20%. Five seconds is not enough. Lucci rebounds and packs Asta instead. And notably, this is actually kind of what I was hoping for. And I still, wildly enough, even after this chapter, you can probably tell by the intro, but I still think there's a high possibility of that happening. And then. Runner up to that was 13%. Five seconds is just enough to disable both. Melly steps up to the end. That is also a possibility. Like, it could, and that, and that could be what this chapter is implying right here. But once again, my intro, I'm going to be talking, I'm probably going to be, the theory section at the end of this review is probably going to be so long. But then the fourth runner up choice is five seconds is just enough. A Lucci packed, and a Melly steps up to bat. So, that would, that one kind of implied that. Asta doesn't get packed, but but Melly may come up and put him in a pack afterwards, so who knows? And then five seconds is just enough. Lucci is packed, happy ever after. Essentially, Melly doesn't do anything and just was like, eh. well, the ability, ability that sometimes I'm not messing with that anti magic kid and dips. So, least likely option in my mind, and also the option that got the least amount. However, if I had to, if I had to say, obviously, my answer was <laughs> the second runner up, or not the second runner up, the runner up, which in Lucci would have rebounded and packed Asta up, but now five seconds was enough. But enough of that. Let's hop into this chapter. Make sure you vote on next week's poll. Not, I keep saying next week. Make sure you vote on the poll that will be dropping tomorrow at 12 in order to determine and give your opinion on what's going to happen next. So, enough of that. Let's hop into the review itself. What's up, guys? I'm Pencil, and here we are to do chapter 328 of Black Clover, which is known as Always, a.k.a. Golly G. Willikers. Five seconds sure is a lot. And once again, anime time. These are massively fast than light characters. It makes sense, but golly gee willikers, they have whole conversations and flashbacks in five seconds. <laughs> but enough of that, let's hop right into the chapter itself. So we open up, and we get to see that little kick that Asa decided to do, the fact that he decided to be fancy, did bite him in the butt just a little bit. Because Luchi... Well, interestingly enough, he's using both hands. He's going a bit serious now because, like, Asta kicked him away and is obviously going in for the follow up, right? Like, he's about to hit Luchi with the full, 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 and like, and Wombo combo that man to oblivion. But Luchi, he manages to recover, right? Like, he at least, like, I was afraid that Luchi was gonna, like, after the kick from last chapter, the chapter ended like that. I thought Luchi was gonna get slammed into the ground or have to scramble up. But no, he recovers, drags his claws into the ground, and then Asta lunges in. But in that moment that he lunges in, and it is so cool, right? Like, it is very rare for a uh, mangaka, whether their character is possessed by a demon or not, for the mangaka to go out of their way and be like, oh yeah, our main character is a monster, monstrous animal that will definitely hunt down its opponents. But to like see Asta lunge in and like he doesn't have any eyes, he doesn't have any. Well, no, he has eyes, but he doesn't have pupils. He doesn't have a mouth. He's just lunging through. He's this force of nature that's dashing between the rocks, going for Luchi, and it's it's terrifying in the best way, right? Like this is this is vindiction. This is justice. This is revenge. This is the culmination of everything we've been waiting for. So to see him lunge in like that, so it's such a like a predatory 
nature to it. It's very, very cool to see. However, of course, we get to see that Luchi, he's more than willing to start using his magic now because he's throwing the rocks around and he manages to slam Asta with a rock that he lifts from the ground. And that's interesting because once again, Luchi is Green Immortalist. Maidenless? Probably. <laughs> Green Immortalist? Absolutely. So he doesn't have any way to channel any magic spells, really. So right now, he's literally just relying on his gravity manipulation. But I think this is the first time we've seen him use it to, like, anti-gravity something. Like, you can argue all of his flight is his anti-gravity stuff. Because he doesn't necessarily flap his wings. He's not a bird. But at the same time, this is the first time we've literally seen him, like, throw a rock. <laughs> Which is hilarious that this is the Demon King's, like, final resistance against death. Rock throw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just found it kind of funny. But of course, then we backflash, or flashback, if you will, to Asta and Lee, right? And we finally get the full explanation of what happened, right? And we kind of assumed this for a while, but it's good to get it, like, I guess, directly on panel. But one time, Lieb and Lucido were just sitting together, you know, on a wall. And I guess Lucido felt it was finally appropriate to explain her backstory. She's like, I had a son. And honestly... At this point, he should probably be around your age, as long as, like, humans and demons age along the same range. And honestly, I was amazed and happy that he managed to be born healthy. And that is true. And, and, and this kind of makes me wonder, right? <laughs> How long did she wait? <laughs> and did she, like, the, the guy she, she did it with, he's got to be gone, right? Like, that Lississi, it had to take him out of this world, right? Like, I, I don't see how she had a kid. <laughs> like, legitimately, I mean, unless that man was an insta shot, I don't, I don't know how she did that. And hope, and like, no, the anime hasn't covered that yet, so I won't go into that. But there's a specific series that does something, and I don't, I hope, I hope Black Clover doesn't take that same route because I didn't like. I'll admit, full on as much as I like this other series that I'm thinking of, I didn't like when that other series did that because it just felt. A little nonsensical, <laughs> but regardless, it is it is entirely possible that like if he lived inside you for nine months, what is being outside of you and in your presence meant to imply? Like I get she was afraid that even though he was born healthy, she would hypothetically steal life force from him. But like you didn't give him you didn't give any time to figure that out. <laughs> like I'm not sure how old baby Asta is in this shot. But he at least has to be more than a day. I doubt you popped him out and then instantly took him to an orphanage. And like I said, it feels weird that she instantly said adoption. When if the simple thing is to not have any magic, she should have sensed that he didn't have any magic. Like, Lieb survived pre-anti-magic. It's not like he was negating any of Lucida's abilities, right? Like, it's not like he was covered in anti-magic up to the point, and then, bada-bing, bada-boom, that's why Lucida couldn't do anything to him. And he, he gained the anti-magic property after Lucida's death. So the fact that Lucida kind of... I know it's meant to just be a sad story about how, like, a mother gave up her son for her son's sake, but it does... Like, when I first read it, I'm like, that actually doesn't make sense. <laughs> he lived inside you for nine months and then popped out and probably had no magic of his own. So, what, I, like, maybe maybe it's a, a specific thing that I just don't get, but maybe you could have waited a day or something. <laughs> like, may, wait a couple days. And even, the thing is, right, if she did wait a couple days and he was still alive and well, why'd you put him up for adoption? <laughs> like, I feel like Lucita, and I'm not saying Lucita was, like, being a bad character or anything, like, trying to you know, get her out of being a mom, she just didn't want to raise a baby, obviously not, she definitely loves Asta, she went out of her way to adopt <laughs> Lieb, of all people, and no offense, if I saw Lieb on the road, I wouldn't attack him, but I wouldn't go near him, so, <laughs> she obviously is a better person than I, in that sense, but, in that same vein, I feel like giving up baby Asta so quickly, especially when, for reasonably, you should have been fine to keep him, considering you tend to drain the magic and thus life force, not just life force for people with the example of Leap. I, I don't really know about that. You know, that's not that's not my prerogative. I'm not saying I'm not saying you did the wrong thing, Lucita, but I'm just saying you may have acted a little bit too hastily and left Asta without a mom. <laughs> because you were scared of a possibility that doesn't make sense happen. I don't know. Tell me if I'm crazy for that. I know I'm, I'm kind of getting on Lucita's case for this, but, like, when I read it, it really grabbed my attention. Does that, does that make sense to y'all? 
that she immediately gave Asta up, even though Asta was born healthy, born fine, and born magicless. Like, I'm assuming Lacita has the ability to sense magic, because she can tell Lieb has none. <laughs> so, she should be able to tell. And, like, it'd be one thing if we got, like, a little elaboration. Like, she explained that, oh, my son was born with magic, but just being around me drained his magic from him. Sure, he looked alive and stuff like that, but... I don't know if I kept him around me for too long. Maybe I wouldn't just drain his magic. I'd drain his life force away. And then that would give a reason why Asta has no magic. And it would also give a reason why Lisita would give him up. Because then she would have reason to be afraid. Because she saw her powers were working to some degree on him. But from what I see, <laughs> it doesn't really... Nothing really correlates here to the point where, uh-oh, my baby came out healthy, perfectly alive, and I don't seem to be killing him. Let me give him up immediately. Sorry, I know I went off on that, but it just seems strange to me. And of course, in the back in reality, real time, she leaped up. Or no, not she. Luchi leaped up to take advantage of Asta getting smushed against a rock. And of course, Asta's like, hey, buddy old pal, you should have just ran. <laughs> because he lunges into the swing and Asta once again just takes it to the gut. But we get to see that Lee that Lacita's explaining to Lieb, like, yeah, honestly, I'm unfit to be a mother, I'll never be by his side, I'll never hold him in my arms, I will never get to see him ever again, but tomorrow and the day after, always, always, and forever, I will love him. Great. <laughs> and that's great, no. Should have waited a little longer. Nah, but it, it's a very, like, if you're not a cynic... <laughs> A cynical story analyst who looks at things like who looks for the more logical situation behind things. What all I my whole critique probably didn't even bother you felt the emotion behind this, and I will give it credit. That is very emotional, right? Like she'll always love her son no matter what. And obviously this son is working with her other son to fight back against the demon king who got her killed. Great. That's, it's really, really good, right? I'm not, I'm not even gonna I'm gonna cap. I ain't gonna cap. That's pretty darn good. I like that. I like that. I like it. Picasso. And of course, we get to see that. The punch that Lucha went to land kind of just bounces off. Like, it doesn't even bounce off. Like, he doesn't even make Asta flinch. Asta's glaring at him with that same intent and bloodlust that he has had for a while now. And Lucci, I'm not necessarily sure it's fear. I think it's more interest. Once again, Lucci has very weird facial expressions. He doesn't have traditional human facial expressions, despite having a mostly humanoid face. So I can almost never tell what he's feeling, which kind of goes into the whole, like, Demon King, different species, stuff like that. Like, I get that. But, like, he looks upon Asta... Face tanking it, but then he realizes something. He's like, Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You weren't. You're her. And and that's an interesting, that's a very interesting way to put it, right? Like, he calls, he remembers Lucida being the one that stopped him from manifesting through Lieb. And he's like, yeah, That worthless woman who got in my way, you're her. Like, he doesn't say you're her child, you're her son, or anything like that. Like, she, she straight up equivocates her to Asta. And I wonder if that's just like underworld grammar, <laughs> or it's just like the heat of the moment, or something like that. But you're her is such a weird way to put that. Like, he doesn't. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, never mind. I get it. I get it. I get it. I was about to say, maybe the official translation will do something about that. But it's your, her ellipses exclamation point. So I'm assuming what Lucci would have gone on to say if Asta didn't, like, instantly flinch and slice his horn off would be that you're her son. Or you're, you're her, you are her son. And stuff like that. And that's what would have been said. Was once again, right? Like, Asta. Be alive, that's truth. You are just fighting for your sleep. You're fighting for your mama who put you up for adoption way too soon. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> if, if that's the reason why Austin keeps refusing to acknowledge <laughs> Lucina as mom, because he's just like, well, well, wait a minute. She took you in, but not me? Man, that sucks. I'm not going to ever go call that one my mom. <laughs> that would actually be hilarious. But, of course, we get to see that Lucy doesn't even get to get the words out, right? Like, he, he gets to acknowledge, hey, minute, wait a minute. You you are that woman. And then Asa's like, okay, Anne. And then slices his horn off. And Lucy goes in for another punch. And I'll give Lucy credit here, right? Like, even in the face of sheer death and despair itself, the Demon King's not running. And while I do think... 
it's kind of stupid. I would like the thing is if I was Lucci in the scenario and I realized that this thing that I let live for too long finally became a threat. The moment it kicked me away and gave me any distance, I will throw up all rocks in the general direction because I know it can't sense me. I'm well, actually, I don't think he he may not know that Asta can't sense him. But at the same time, I'm throwing up a whole bunch of rocks and I'm gone. I'm not staying in the general vicinity of this thing. It's the only thing that can kill me, which makes me once again. The theories in me are going wild right now. Ugh, my brain is expanding. But in terms of the fight, like Lucci reels back with his fist, and Asta's like, I, bro, let me level with you real quick, dog. Look me dead in my eyes, bro, and tell me who told you it was a good idea to bring your bare knuckle brawls to a fist fight, my boy, and instantly just takes the arm off. Like, he, he really said, oh, Lucci, you in a weight loss program? Hold on, no problem. Let me help you lose 10 pounds. Bada bing, bada boom, the arm's gone. Like, and the crazy thing is, the arm is gone and seemingly kicked away, too, right? Because the way this shot is drawn, it's meant to kind of trick you. But, like, it, you see the cutoff arm in the back, and you in the arm that actually got severed is kind of covered by, by um, Asta's cape flowing thing stuff like that but yeah no asta instantly sliced off the arm and kicked it away and like the thing is lucci for the first time i think just because the eye widening i think this is the first time he actually has like legitimate shock on his face and he's like oh no you mean the strategy i've been using for this long just isn't working but asta, once again i love it he's not saying anything anymore he's he's just he's a creature of instinct and a creature of habit at this moment he's just swinging his blade swinging for the kill and i think it's it's great i don't know because it's rare to have your shonen mcs go like this you can have you can have some stretches where they will like you can have bloodlust moments but like Usually, bloodlust moments are accompanied by like a lot of screaming, a lot of fanfare, like 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 on that. And that's not a bad thing. I love those moments. But at the same time, like it's always cool to see those quiet moments of just pure distilled wrath. Like Asta is furious. He's fuming on the inside, but he's not. He's not like. He's not yelling fuming. He's just. He's, he's executing a mission, and that mission just happens to be the dismembering and the dethroning of a king, and I think it's amazing to see. And you get to see that Lucci is like, oh, I'm really about to die here, because notably all his arms are gone now. Like, Asta slices off all four arms. He can no longer make fists, so he would have to resort to his feet, but Asta doesn't even give him the chance, bro. And then with the first time he speaks in the chapter, he's like, yo, let me tell you something real quick, dog. The only one here who's worthless is you and like asta my boy you couldn't aim like two degrees higher like you see the big dark gap gaping hole gapping <laughs> the big dark gaping hole in his chest like you couldn't like angle your blade just a little bit higher so you could like slice through the chest too like i get it Sometimes aim, aiming yourself is a little bit rough. <laughs> I understand. I respect the hustle, my boy. But like, I mean, and to be fair, the heart isn't necessarily supposed to be in the center of the chest. It's supposed to be in the left part. And hypothetically, maybe that's what Asta was going for because he does slice on the left part of Lucci's chest. So maybe he's assuming his heart is there. But like for all the previous Supreme ones, like the heart was literally dead in the center, maybe directly in that dark pit. You probably should have sliced there. And you see, the thing is, Asta gets a little bit closer on the second swing, but still, he, like, just barely misses the center of the dark pit. Like, that's literally a bullseye, Asta. But, of course, it's still insane, right? Because when he bisects Lucci, he bisects, bisects him. Like, straight down the cut. Like, Lucci, he didn't need that second. He did not need that second slice. Like, Lucci literally would have slid down the half of him and would have been done. And then, of course, <laughs> Asta still goes for the second slice anyway and court quisects him. Buy, buys two, tries three. Quarter sex him? I'm not sure how. <laughs> I hope that doesn't get. But I don't know. He, he essentially cuts him in half again. And with that, Devil Union is fully up, and Asta drops out of it. He and Lieb defuse. And Lieb is ironically enough at full size, too, which is appropriate. I'm glad he's not mini him anymore. And Lucci, as he falls, bleeding darkness. And just bleh, bleh, on the ground, literally in pieces. <laughs> he, we see that <laughs> as a bar, they both decide to declare, <clears throat> Hey, Demon King, while you crawl on the ground, we're going to live. 
and be happy. And that's a bar. That's a bar. However, I 100% believe, like, the, the chapter even ends with, The Demon King is overwhelmed. ba da -ba. Um, I, like, <laughs> there, are two, there are multiple ways this should go, right? And let's, let, let, let's address it one by one. Okay. One, the most basic of them all, the heart theory. The idea that, you know, despite them cutting him up real good, the heart never necessarily seemed to matter too much. <laughs> or no, it didn't seem to matter too much to the directives, like where they were hitting. And it is entirely possible that that black, gigantic spot, that's that gaping dark hole in Lucci's chest, would happen to be where his heart is. And we know to defeat a supreme demon, you need to, you know, get their heart up out of there. Like, it's not... This isn't too complicated a math equation, I right? You gotta get the rid of the heart or else they live. And I'm not saying anti-magic is incapable of getting rid of a heart. It is very capable of getting rid of a heart. But I just don't think they slashed them there. And notably, whatever anti-magic they seem to have had was used up. And considering all the battle damage and, like, fatigue they must be under, really, let me see, what part of Lucci would get up? <laughs> Which part of his is his head still attached to? So, like, if Lucci's right arm and his head got up, and started using magic, he could he could probably impale both of them on his remaining horns. Even though they're blunted, he could definitely do it. Like, the gap in power is so large. Even if he can't regen, which I think he, he should be able to. I know he hasn't yet. Like, he hasn't popped out new arms or new legs or new wings or anything like that. But at the same time, I feel like he should be able to. Because, like, Meji was able to... I mean... Xenon could, because Bone... Mat I'm not sure if he... It, it, it's a 50-50 whether or not he can. But even then, he still should be able to body as just, like, a floating, armless head thing with one broken arm coming out of his back. Like, he should still be able to win, ironically enough. So if it's just like, well, good job, kiddos. They didn't get my heart, sucks to suck, and it starts annihilating them, they would be like that when you believe that sometimes. However... That's the that's the more basic one. I wouldn't. I'd be fine with it mainly because I think it makes sense, and it, it would kind of be on Asta's fault for letting Lucci. <laughs> Once again, these two, these two, despite having such an innate bloodlust for each other, have done things preceding. Well, maybe Lucci doesn't necessarily have bloodlust for Asta until this very chapter, because he's he never necessarily respected Asta enough to have bloodlust for him. But for two people who want the other dead and have wanted the other dead, like. They're doing very unoptimal things to secure the end of the other. Like, Lucci's out here stalling and wasting time. Like, I, as proud as I am of the captains and Yuno and Mero and Yami and Nock and all that, like, with the power that Lucci was infer implied to have, they should all be done. Like, not, not gonna lie, there should be no reason that this fight went on for as long as it did on Lucci's end. Especially when he decided that, okay... I'm going to get rid of the anti-magic kid because he's the only one here outside the darkness user that could actually do something to me. Like, the fact that he struggled at all with someone like Yuno or Mero at that point and couldn't instantly off Asta, kind of, kind of whack. I'm not going to say it's unrealistic. I'm not going to say that I'm kind of shocked or annoyed that Luchi couldn't do it. I just think plot convenience there was a bit strong. Same thing for Asta in this case. Like, there are times, like, when Asta screamed out that he was going to attack Luchi, even when he literally could just decapitated him right then and there when Asta was coming out here not slicing for the heart like he he got two slices in Asta slice and dice this man why'd you kick him away should just body bagged him that was a little bit weird but other than that I think it's fine like so if Luchi gets up heart only and then packs Asta perfectly fine by me on the other hand on the other end if you will we have the whole concept of this not being the real Luchi Notably, and no, this isn't my theory, I don't have any backup for this, I just remember reading it somewhere, but I do believe that Melly is supposed to be the equivalent to Dorothy on the tree, like, in terms of where they're located relative to the Tree of Elves, we know Dorothy was a reincarnation of a previous elf, so it is entirely possible that as an opposite or as a complement to Dorothy's otherworldly dream magic, Melly can pop up with, like, real-life dreams, like, essentially can turn lucid dreaming into just drop drop the dream, make it lucid. So essentially, this Lucci that we see isn't actually the real one. And I think I, the only thing that doesn't necessarily fit about that, but then again, Melly, if all people would know what Lucci actually acts like, and it would explain why, for some reason, despite the blatant treason, <laughs> Lucci let Melly ignore him. And I know that obviously Lucci was being quote unquote pressed by Yuno and Mero at that point. But 
the idea that a second, like anyone who's not supreme, speaking back to a king and a hierarchy that's purely based off power. Like if I was Lucci in that moment, a free formed and not one that was like made to exist with certain restrictions, I would have been like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, fiery lion woman, I like your hustle. You can go over there though, and you, teleporting star man, I respect you. Give me a second though. I need to go punch my subordinate in the mouth so he remembers who which one of us is the king, and then he goes and do does that. But the, the idea that Melly's just been sitting around all this time, has been observing, like, the fact that this king, quote-unquote, could even fall this easy. I know the king's only at 50%, right? That's, that's what really happens here. But at the same time, it feels a little bit strange, right? And notably, this whole idea of a real dream, right? Like, them, and this actually kind of fits when you think about it. Because what is Leap's dream? Leap's dream is to defeat some defeat Lucci. But of course, if Lucci never truly manifested, and this dream could be granted by a person who could make real dreams, make real constructs that turn into actual dreams in reality and make them true, then it wouldn't be too far-fetched for this Lucci to be a dream that we achieved. And then after that, Melly wakes up and is like, congratulations. You notice something weird, and you, and you look at it, and you realize that, hey, Lucci has no hearts, Lucci has nothing, and it would, it, it would also make sense that Lucci would be a king that couldn't manifest his magic, or, like, Meli was able to copy the raw physicality in some aspects of Lucci's strength, but not all of it. Like, the spells of Lucci, the true, like, and it would explain the whole 50% manifestation thing, and to be fair, obviously it was because the manifestation was cut short, and the tree was stopped, that's an obvious big thing. But it would make sense why Lucci seems so oddly, like, out of character. Like, why would Lucci care about these fodder humans when it has a goal? Why would Lucci be struggling so much? Why would Lucci seemingly get overwhelmed and cut down and be put in this position like this? However, the only issue with that is, like, Lucci seem And, like, Dorothy's constructs within the world of the glamour world, the only issue there... Is that, I mean, I guess Dorothy's constructs had some manner of knowledge. Like, like I remember Dorothy's constructs can mimic the properties, the voices, everything of what Dorothy has seen. But I'm not sure if they can mimic the memories. Because the situation that Lieb refers to here is so Lieb specific. Like, I don't think that was a thing that Lucci went into his court of demons that was like, Guys, I hate to admit it. I almost manifested, but this random human woman stopped me, gosh darn it. Her name was Asita, gosh darn it, I remember, like, the memory is the only thing that throws me off. But who knows, maybe with the higher level of underworld dream magic, that could be mimicked and stopped here. Or, like, worse comes to worse, right? That's the second idea. The third idea is that this really is Lucci. He just never did get the chance to fully manifest, unless he's still, he's going to have to go back, like his other self in the underworld is still stuck there, and he's just going to have to deal with that. And then Melly, who did manage to fully manifest, steps up and is like, all right, we're never letting you get that close to manifesting him again, and I need to stop you right now. <laughs> Like, then Melly would just, it would make sense why Melly waited, right? Because essentially, it was, regardless, regardless of what was going to happen for Melly, he was either going to have to fight a full power Lucci, or let the humans deal with it, and weaken him at least, to then fight a weakened 50% Lucci, or the humans would kill Lucci. And either way, he would take out the fatigued humans. Like, this could just all end up being Melly's waiting strategy, where he's just like, I lose nothing here, so I will do nothing. <laughs> like, like, that's just... <laughs> that's the tortoise versus the hare approach for there. Like, Lucci was the hare. He went out all out, was just destroying things, bada bing, bada boom. Melly was like, yeah, I'll take my time. And then I could definitely see Melly stepping up, right? Because this is supposed to be a very triumphant moment to the end of the chapter, right? Like, Austin Lee looking over the <laughs> crawling, like, not corpse, because Lucci's eyes are still open. I don't think he's dead. But the thing is, this is supposed to be triumph, right? Like, they defeated the Demon King. Who knows? He may not be able to get back up. He may just be bleeding out right there on the floor, and then he's done. But, obviously, I could see this triumphant moment being cut short with, a, like, once again, the little... Good work. I really respect what you humans did. Now, there can finally be a new Demon King. And then, like, do you... Melly would grab and then crush Lucci's heart through the remains and be like, 
and that demon kinks me, and then bada bing, bada boom, Luchi takes over. Not Luchi takes over. Melly takes over. Anyway, I'm, I'm very, I'm just very intrigued to see where we're going now. Because unless we get another transcendent DU somehow between Austin Lieb and we, or someone awakens to some super ultra mega magic, I think the plot kind of has to stop here because everyone's done. Like, there's no one, the only person who could step forth and do something crazy would be like Noelle, right? Because she hasn't done anything. And she's the only person who we know has like the arcane saint stage level stuff where she could hypothetically do something. But even then, like, I don't really. I'm, I'll admit, this is once again a chapter where I don't know where we're going to go at all. And there's so many different directions we could go that I'm very proud of. This is an easy 10 out of 10 chapter for what it does within it and what it leaves for next time. So, super solid chapter. I really, really like it. Please tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Sorry about that. Also, also, I do a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Now, thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Other Pencil, writing off.